the Nigerian Medical Association has given the federal government 21 days to address the issues of the National Association of Resident Doctors, or else they will maybe also join the strike. We're going to be joined by the Secretary General of the Nigerian Medical Association, uh, Dr. Phillips Ikbe, who's uh, well joining us now. Good morning, Doc. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. All right. So it's a 21-day ultimatum. Quickly tell us about that and why the NMA has taken this stance. Well, um, as you know, the Nigerian Medical, Nigerian, uh, Medical Association is the umbrella body of all the doctors in this country. And we operate with affiliates. Affiliate means that different bodies. The Nigerian uh, Association of Resident Doctors, NAD, is part of the affiliates of the Nigerian Medical Association. And they are aware that before now, they have been negotiating with the government. They've had a memorandum of uh, understanding. They have a memorandum of action. Unfortunately, government have not met up these demands. Even the ones they managed to meet up, they, they did that haphazardly. As such, I mean, and in all these negotiations, Nigerian American Association sent representatives, sent observers, you know, go with them. I particularly have been going with them. And uh, uh, the government did not close its eyes while it was signing these agreements, these, you know, this memorandum of action. And the, they usually put time line when they discuss that, okay, after so, so time, this is what will be done. I'm telling you, since almost the beginning of this year, more than four or five months now, I mean, we shouldn't sit, we should not be here. And so looking at it properly, I think the, the action of NAD is legitimate. Okay. And because of that, Go because ahead. of that, we, dis we discuss it in our National Assembly Council meeting. I realize that it is time probably to give the backing to NAD. That look, government, you need to sit up. If you realize uh, the healthcare system in the country is currently in shambles, because NAD is uh, a very vital part of the system, of the healthcare system. If NAD is not working, especially in public institutions, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's the functioning capacity of those public institutions will be less than 50, less than 30%. And the Nigerian people are suffering because they need to be treated, they need to take care of their health. As such, NMA, you know, feel that Look, let us put our weights behind that in this issue. Probably that to help government or make government to sit up and uh, uh, fulfill the demands of that. Thank you. All right. You said that you, you had joined um, in the negotiations over time. Uh, so can, can you share with us, you know, what that conversation really is like? Every time that the doctors meet with the federal government, um, what, what vibe do you get from those discussions, um, you know, that has eventually led to failure to adhere to their promises? Well, the truth is that government appear to be honest and there is usually cordial uh, discussion to say what can be done and what cannot be done. And at the end of the day, they come to an agreement. The major issue, and it may be they will begin to try to implement, but immediately not cause of their strike, government will relax and uh, nothing is happening again. And that is why till today you will have it that uh, up to now, some doctors are working and they've not been paid. Some doctors worked for three months, four months, six months, and they've not been paid, and so many other issues. Um, the, the agreements and, of course, the demands by NARD, what would your response be to people who say that they are probably asking for too much and, current, and uh, right now the Nigerian government is pretty tight on funds and cannot necessarily release that uh, amount, amount of money? Um, would that explanation make sense uh, to you? Nigerian government have not said that they are tight for money, therefore they cannot meet up with demand. No. They said they even said they have the money and they can meet up the demands. Especially, let's look at the medical residency training fund. The other ones, the salaries of, uh, of those workers is already in the budget and that's supposed to be paid. So I don't, I don't think, that, there's no time that the Nigerian government said, look, we don't have enough money. Remember that uh, there is COVID-19 uh, uh, allowance that was, that was supposed to pay. They told NAD, they told NMA, we don't have enough money. Let us discuss how to improve the general hazard allowance in the, in the salary structure. And now the government and, and the NMA agreed. So it's not about NAD or NMA being very difficult or, you know, saying that uh, they, they don't have the money. No. We, we are working together. We all agreed with government. They knew what they have before they reached those agreements. They, we they made phone calls 
they reach out to people and they all agree that uh, this, uh, this is possible. And so why are you not doing it? I also believe that uh, government has to put its act together. There are problems with bottleneck and logistics. I mean, you see that now you, uh, the, the Minister of Labor and NADA have agreed on certain issues. Then by the time it comes to implementation, either by one model or the other, it's not been done. And it's taking too long. I mean, not follow, it's not like not finish this negotiation and go to sit down. Not follows it up to see what is going on, and they see that uh, eventually there's stumbling block, especially from the you know uh, I think there is a stumbling stumbling block majorly uh, sometimes from the head of service that is uh, the 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 head of civil service of the federation department, or, you know. So uh, those are the issues. Okay, uh, and. Uh, are, are there things, you know, seeing where we currently stand with this, are there things that the federal government or you would expect that the federal government will be able to suggest that they can immediately implement? It may not be the whole spectrum of demands from the NARD, but are there things that they maybe can start with, you know, that might make the NARD and the NMA, you know, decide, okay, let's, let's you know, handle or, you know, manage what, you know, the government is offering for now and we can negotiate further? You know, uh, Nigerian uh, Association of Resident Doctors and NMA is very reasonable. We know the one that takes a whole lot of processes, and we know the ones that shouldn't take processes. You understand? And that is why sometimes, from time to time, we review it. Uh, for instance, the Medical Residency Training Fund should be paid. Those doctors who were being paid on give me that were supposed to be migrated to what they call IPs, they should be paid. And those, those are remaining house officers, about 1 and 14 of them, uh, they are, that have several issues, they should be paid. And of course, uh, they should begin to uh, uh, also show commitment in the shortfall of 2014, 2015, and 2016. And then the circular for house officers. I mean, that one is the most obnoxious uh, uh, part of it because, I mean, it's like uh, everybody everybody's doing well. It just went down, probably it's put up a circular that is going to, that upset the, that did upset the system. So I think if they are able to do this, uh, these things I, I, I mentioned, NMA should be able to prevail on that and say, look, they've done this, they've done this, they've done this. I mean, let us, uh, because Nigerians are suffering, let's go back to work. But as I'm telling you, all these things that I, I mentioned have not been done. All right, well. But do, well they, claim to be, they claim to be working on it, but how long is it going to take? Yeah. How long is it going to take? We need to see evidence of commitment. You know, this is not the first time uh, government have been uh, reneging on the agreement, and that is why now there is no trust. Even if, as I am, my village will tell me they're going to pay tomorrow, I, I won't believe it until I see it. When they tell me they're paying on on, uh, uh, on Wednesday, I won't believe it until I see it. Now, look at it. This strike has been going on for 21 days, and there's, it's not like there are new agreements. This agreement have been, you know, this agreement have been signed long time ago, over two months, three months. So that means that if now that Colombia strike, probably on the second, on the third, on the fourth. Up to now, they wouldn't have been able to, to, to even fulfill those agreements. They can understand my logism. You understand? You know, this is 20, 20, today is what? Today is... Uh, the 30th um, already. Today is 30th. So this is four weeks. And those demands, which, you know, remember, not strike started on the second. Right? So those demands by now should have been, you know, maybe before even 15th, they should have fulfilled those demands. But unfortunately... Uh, um, even the federal government have not also lived up its expectation. You at always, always, all the time, you go back to the negotiating table. No matter the situation, whether you are in court, whether there is anything, you will try to find a way. But I mean, they, they're not doing enough. All right. I, I want you to also share from a doctor's perspective what, what does it feel like working for months, you know, on end um, without getting paid? It is really very terrible. I particularly, I mean, if I am to work in any establishment and within three, four months I'm not paid, I don't, I don't see the reason why I should remain there. But unfortunately, the situation is such that uh, they are in training. They can't walk away. I mean, it's, it, you understand. I mean, if they could, they will. I'm somehow beginning to walk away. You can see what happened with the interview to Saudi Arabia. They all took there and they're going to take them. And we're going to lose doctors. Our hard end doctors. It's very, very painful. Many of these doctors can't even pay school fees for their children. They can't even pay their house rent anymore. I mean, it's a bad situation for them. At the same time, they are humane. They know that Nigerians are suffering. They wish they can go back to work. They are even appealing to government. 
That is why, I mean, they also reached out to NMA. Say, please, appeal to government for us as an umbrella body. They are also reaching out to the, who is who in the Nigeria. They are reaching out to the different uh, departments, different ministers. And they are reaching out to the House Pass, uh, National Assembly, the, the Speaker. They are reaching out to the, the uh, uh, head of, uh, no, not head of service now, um, uh, uh, Secretary to the Government of the Federation. That look, this is an emergency situation. It's time to intervene. People are dying. You can imagine your security man whose wife is pregnant, and now there's fetal distress or there's a problem as she needs a cesarean session. It is only government hospital that she can, they can uh, 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 afford, and now she gets there, things cannot be done. That is the truth. All right, and uh, I also want you to talk about the, um, I think sometime last week there was news of a court ruling asking the doctors to go back to strike. Um, what's your response to that, and will that be enough to... <laughs> I am not aware that there is a court ruling asking doctors to go back uh, to go back to call off the strike. What I know is that the court ruling adjourned till 15th of September, and uh, you know, and the court stated they have to hear from the doctors. It's not just hearing from the government; they have to hear from the doctors so that the justice will be served. You know, and that means uh, they gave an ample you know latitude for government to renegotiate. So that, I mean, by the time you get back to industrial uh, court, uh, these issues will have been resolved. And it's impossible because uh, the court adjourned to 15th of September. And so it, it should be possible. Government should be able to sit down with NMA, negotiate with NMA, you know, and that, and then uh, fulfill that demands, at least such that it will follow the strike. Nigerians are suffering. I don't know if they understand the burden of what is going on. For those who are negotiating, uh, for some of us, the doctors, we can take care of ourselves, it's not a problem. But we're talking about Nigerians, the population, the Nigerian people, you know, not, not the elites. We're talking about people who go to the hospital daily, uh, Nigerian women. Maternal mortality is going to increase, even with this action. Government has to be sensitive. Um, um, you mentioned Saudi. I'm going to you know, also bring in other angles on the you know, state level. But uh, you mentioned Saudi, and it's some other thing. It's one thing that also... Um, made headlines uh, sometime last week, um, doctors immigrating to Saudi Arabia. Um, share with us, you know, why that is happening and, you know, what the working conditions, you know, seem like from people that you might know in Saudi Arabia. Um, uh, a lot more Nigerian doctors looking at the option of leaving. Well, let's look at it this way. I mean, uh, I'm sure you're aware of the health indices in the world and where Nigeria stands. And out of about 191 countries, Nigeria is ranking 187. That is to let you know that our health care system is abysmal, not in human resources, but in facilities and uh, a working environment and circumstances for welfare. You know, uh, the doctor is poorly paid. They don't have enough facilities to work. I mean, government, like what is going on now with the strike, uh, with the NAT strike, you know, uh, government is not really living up to expectation. And of course, the economy is so bad that, you know, even surviving is a problem. Then there are a lot of um, um, doctors who are also roaming the street of Nigeria. These needed doctors that government needs to employ, get them employed, you know, that they are not being employed. So that is why they are living. And they are living to places where the conditions are better. Uh, for any doctor that leaves Nigeria to Saudi Arabia, his salary is going to increase by about 10 to 20 times. So you understand that. That is over uh, 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 2,000. 1,000 to 2,000 percent increase, you know, with um, that even these salaries are not taxed, and they're not taxed, especially for Saudi Arabia, they're given accommodation, they, are paid, they pay for their vacation, and they're working in a decent environment. Not just that, you know, the pressure on them will be reduced. Here in Nigeria, the, the doctor to patient ratio is about uh, one doctor to 6,000 patients. And that is why that you see that a patient comes in the morning around 8 o'clock, you may not see a doctor till around 4, unless there is an emergency that will now begin to try to see such patient. These are not very good conditions to work. To work. And so it's the reason why they are all tripping down to Saudi Arabia. Of course, they will only be there, but they, they, I mean, the doctors are, I can see they are nationalistic, they are patriotic, they want to be in their country and work. And that is why I see that NAD is looking, look at it, these are the problems. This is why people are living. Show these things and let us, I mean, so that people will not leave. But government is not showing good enough commitment because this is months now and they've not fulfilled the demands of NAD or the negotiation that is signed with, the, with NAD, the memorandum of action. 
uh, you know, so that is it. Do Dr. Ekpe, would you encourage a doctor in Nigeria to leave? Well, nobody's happy. I mean, at the level I am as Secretary General of the Nigerian Medical Association, you know, it's not just about the welfare of the doctors, but also about, about Nigerians. Even if I leave, who is going to treat my mother? Who is going to treat my sister? So it's not like we're encouraging them. But the, the, the environment is hostile. It's not good enough, you understand? So that's why we are in this impasse. That's why we are, we are discussing. For well, That's why we are showing this action for government to realize, because it seems they're not even aware. You know, I imagine a situation where you think that, oh, uh, doctors are surplus. Just get me, don't get me wrong. At, no, at any time, there will be always a migration, you understand? You just like as it is in other fields. After all, sometimes that also people migrate to Nigeria to go and give services. But this, this time around, it's in droves. You remember that uh, the, the interview at Sheraton Hotel, over 500 doctors. Do you know what that means? Do you know what it means for Nigeria to lose me to another country? I'm a chief consultant of social gynecologists. I know the lives have saved. Even in the night, 1 a.m., I drive down to maybe to go and do some kind of surgery to save life, and they are letting me go. That means you don't have value for me. And I'm not only holding you to the job, but I discussed with you, and I've told you that this is, you know, we agree that really this, these issues are very important. Government have not said that demand of NAD is illegitimate or illegal. No, they agree. They, they ensure in our discussion, they own up to it. And sometimes you also see them angry with the people in between. I mean, the people who are supposed to make sure that the processes are done fast for it to be done, you know. So it's, it's not an issue of NAD is high-handed or enemy is high-handed. It's not an issue of their demand is not legitimate. It's an issue that government is not living up to their expectation because of bottlenecks. All right. Um, now, uh, let's now talk about um, you know, the other levels of um, you know, this whole story, and that is from the chief medical directors to the state level also. Um, what would you want you know, to be done on that level to make the working conditions for doctors better? Well, first of all, you know, um, uh, Nigeria should increase its budget for health. The WHO recommendation is saying 15%. The highest Nigeria has gone is 6%. For this year, it's even, I mean, 4%. And even at that 4%, it is not totally implemented. If you go to our hospitals, you see that even we don't have enough bed space. The work is so much. They are not even employing enough. You can imagine that, you know, uh, as these doctors are living, what is going to happen to all the patients? You see a doctor, I mean, I was interacting with a friend who is currently in Saudi. He sees just four to five patients in a day, and he takes his time. But here, a Nigerian doctor may have to see up to 50 patients in a day. Even at that, you know, he will be exhausted. And Nigerian doctors are very good at doing their best. And then you find out that at one time or the other, there's no... Uh, uh, equipment that is working enough for them to work with. The facilities are not okay. And then you now add the poor remuneration to it. And not meeting up this demand. This demand is not just about salary. It's also about research. It's also about improving the place. So the CMDs also have to do their part, but they are doing their part, but also they need government support because uh, the CMD, they don't act on their own. Uh, all right. I, I was. What happens after twenty-one days, uh, Dr. Philip Zekbe? Yes, by twenty-one days, the National Executive Council of the Nigerian Medical Association will meet and take a decision. All right. Is, is there any insights as to what that decision might be? Will the NMA go on its own, well, you know, strike? I would like to to, to come down more on like NMA is optimistic that we are actually going to meet the government. We are going to discuss with them. Because it's not about whether strike or no strike or dropping tools or no dropping tools. We don't want to get there. We want the demand of NAD to be fulfilled. And that is why we are pushing. Even as of yesterday, if you look at my eyes very well, I've not really slept. Either because of one meeting or the other, trying to make sure to put pressure that, look, get this thing done. And uh, 21 days is a long time. If government will say, oh, in a week's time, this and this will be happening, then I, I believe that we may not really get to that 21 days. So I think we shouldn't even be discussing 21 days. We should be discussing how to fulfill that demand. I'm telling you, even on the, I think, the, is it Saturday, in the night, there were meetings of different persons in government functionaries. But I think that government have to break some protocols. You understand? It's an emergency situation. They shouldn't wait. They shouldn't be... Uh, the normal fire movement from 
Ministry of Health to head of service to budget to IPs and back a, to attorney general to finance and back on the rest of them. Or even if they have to do that, they should, it should be brisk, it should be brevity, I mean, so that uh, we, we pass this stage. One of the things that has been mentioned over uh, time is the hazard allowance for doctors, which uh, they have, you know, asked that it should be improved on. Um, can you share with us, you know, what type of hazards doctors have to deal with um, at their workplace every day? Oh, it is very, very many. I mean, think, let's just give an example when this COVID-19 pandemic uh, uh, was at its peak. I mean, why people were isolating at home, doctors were there at the forefront working, exposing themselves. You know, you know, we, we lost quite some doctors. I mean, even now we tell you. We lost quite some doctors. I can tell you that some people that uh, I know that I cried today that we lost. You know, the, you know, the, quite a lot of them, personal friends. So that is one major hazard. With this because there is pandemic, I get to know it. How about tuberculosis? How about hepatitis B? How many just too many? How about HIV? That so many hazards that doctors go through. I mean, how about accident on the road? I mean, I told you just now that sometimes 1 a.m. they have to call me. There was one day I was driving back from the natural hospital. I missed the road. You understand? There was no light on the road. There was no light. And, and you know, when you're getting to a place called Abacha Barracks, the road is the way it divides. I almost ran into the bush. So these are hazards. You understand? These are serious hazards that they go through. I mean, you're operating on HIV patient. The doctor will not say no because patient is HIV positive. I will not operate. They operate. And sometimes we prick ourselves. Despite the fact that we try to, you know, take the precautions, you know, what does hepatitis B that eventually causes cancer of the liver? I mean, you know, these things are, have, you know, are, the, are a lot of hazard that we go through. You know, you are discussing with a patient, the patient is coughing, and all the rest of them. I mean, you know, that can be transmitted. You know, these are all the hazard they go through. But while you are in the office, while you are sitting at home, you are not going to go through all that hazard. So, doctor is like in the war front trying to make sure that the health of Nigerians are, are good. At the same time, risking their own life, risking their own health. Because, I mean, you know, he, he, he's like the, I mean, a military man that is defending the country. He's, he may die too. So that is what, you know, and many of the doctors have died. Some have even had to commit suicide because of pressure, because of depression, because of this, you know, you, you know this system. Um, one thing that has been mentioned a few times um, by critics, you know, for the NAR the NN, and the NMA, is that a lot of doctors have their own private practice, you know, that keeps them going. And, you know, it, it may be, you know, it's a thing of greed. That, that's what makes them continue to make these demands. Um, would you have something to say to that? Thank you very much, you know. Uh, let me put it this way. If government is living up to its expectation, I don't think many doctors want to go into private practice. Because let's look at Abuja. I live in Abuja. If you depend on salary alone with what government is paying, it's difficult. You may not be able to pay your rent, you may not be able to, you know, the cost of living. So it is part time work they are doing. You know, you close around the five, you are not on call. You go to work elsewhere just to make ends meet. It's not like, I mean, they have CMDs and they are there, they are watching us. We work. So it is unfortunate that they are bringing up that issue that uh, uh, doctors are being greedy. No, it is the private sector that actually treats is treating about seventy percent of seventy percent of Nigerians. It's just that the private sectors are not also not so developed because the environment is hostile. The economy is bad. I mean, we had dollar one dollar is about five hundred naira. You can imagine what it will cost to buy equipment from outside, and that's why government has to. You know, be up and about in, in, in you know, uh, in a, a particular I mentioned about four areas. Number one is health. Health and health and health again. Number two is security. Security is also important. And that is one of the ones I did not mention. It's one of the reasons, too, why some persons, uh, you know, most of our, quite a lot of our healthcare workers are leaving the country. The security challenge is just too much. It's just much, you know. I mean, we know doctors have been killed by, you know, and we also know doctors whose life have been killed. I mean, if that should happen to you, would you want to stay? For instance, now Nigerians are no longer they are hardly traveling by road now. People are now forcefully traveling uh, uh, via air, even when they cannot afford it because of insecurity. People are just drive from here to Kaduna. Either you are kidnapped or you are killed or something is going on. So this this uh, issue of uh, not feeling safe is also one of the reasons they are living. But going back to your question, I, I don't think doctors are greedy. 
even the private hospitals, how much is he really paying that when they look at it that it's a private hospital? No. I mean, it's government hospital should just uh, it's what the the doctors working there. How many of them are actually working in the private hospital? They only do part time. I, I I assure you, they only do part time. But always uh, at work. I mean, go to national hospital when if without the strike, you see the doctors at their workplaces. Go to good the investor legal team hospital. Go to last week. I mean, you see them working. I mean, we have sent patients there, and you see them working. So, I, I don't think it is true that uh, oh. uh, uh, because the issue is about private practice. In short, the the, the, the doctors in government are augmenting the private practice because government doesn't even have enough facility to even handle uh, 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 the Nigerian patient. They don't. If that sometimes a patient comes to, to maybe uh, uh, an hospital, you find that the bed is full. You refer to another hospital, the bed is full. You refer to another hospital, the bed is full. You end up landing in the, in the private hospital that is not even affordable. Government right. has to be serious on health insurance. It should be mandatory. I mean, the only about less than 5% of Nigerians, you know, even who are in government are even covered, you understand, in a population of 200 million persons. Look, that is the way to go, health insurance. With health insurance, All right, Dr. Be adequate. All right, um, Secretary General, Nigeria Medical Association, Dr. Phillips Ekbe, thank you so much for your time. Thanks thank for speaking you. with us. Thank we wish you. you a great Monday ahead. Thank you. Thank you. All right, from challenges in the health sector, we move to challenges in the power sector. We're going to be speaking next on the Nigerian Electric Electricity Regulatory Commission and, of course, its um, well, supposed message to increase electricity tariffs from the 1st of September. That comes up next after the short break.